All right, hello everybody. Peter here. Just doing some drawing here today. I want to take a mo this moment in time, this moment in time to do some drawing with you. Let me get this pen started. Sometimes I suck on it. The, the Rotring isographs, they work really well once you get them started. It could be empty. Let me check. No, I think there's still ink in there. I wanted to take this moment in time, hang out with you for a minute, and that's right, do some drawing. Hope you're all doing okay today. This is just like a little sketchbook I have. It's like a, what does it say, traveler's notebook. Has some scribbles and stuff in here. These Rotring, I like using these Rotring Isograph sketchbooks. They, uh, excuse me. There's like a little, they have an entirely metal nib. Let me zoom in a little bit. There we go. Now I can get a good look at what's going on. Sorry, I don't know if that sounds weird. I am sucking on the nib of this pen right now. <laughs> Oh, well, well, there we go. I pro Okay, I definitely got some of the ink in my mouth right there. But now the pen is working and we can begin. All right, so a little bit of real-time drawing. Let's just take some time and uh, draw. I, know I usually start over here just because if I start over here, then there's more likely that I'll be putting my hand on fresh ink. So I kind of gradually work my way across the paper this way. It's just the general way it works. I don't really have any plans for how this might work or what might happen. And that's okay. That's fine. Anyways, what I really wanted to say is, I hope you're all doing well today. I do. I do. I'm not going to speed this video up at all. This is, um... I don't know, is this like the, maybe a little installation in the Drawing with Peter, Drawing with Peter series? If the, I think that's a series I have. Sometimes I, sometimes I start a series on my channel, and some of my series have, a, have as little as one video in them. I start a series, I'm like, oh, this will be a cool series, and then I never make another installation. Uh, but that's okay. I can always come back to it later whether it's a day later or a year later or um, in another life later, a parallel universe later. I'm not really sure if I believe in parallel universes. A lot of people seem very adamant and dogmatic about it. That They, they seem to describe as um, parallel universes as being a place where everything that doesn't happen in this life, in, in our existence as we know it, happens in another life, right? I don't know. It just seems like, well, just that, like we don't know. So wh why be so sure about it? I just don't know. What I do know, one thing I do know is that I like drawing these little lines, sometimes little curvy ones, sometimes straighter ones like this, And kind of merge them all together. Like this. I want to, um, one thing I've been struggling with lately with my art, if I can take a moment to be perfectly honest with you, one thing I've been working on for years, I kind of have to burp right now. I'll, I'll lean away from the mic to do it if I do, like this. I don't know how well you could hear that, just a little bit. <clears throat> One thing I've been working on is creating more depth, which, which usually I've found, or so far has consisted of creating um, darker areas, right? Like how I colored in this little spot right here, and I'll you know, color in this. Usually I struggle with depth because I just like, uh, I like putting in lots of details, right? 
And sometimes to, to create the depth, you just have to create like lots of dark black spots that sink into the background. And you can't, you can't, it's hard to put in details uh, if it's just like a solid black spot. So you kind of have to find the middle ground. These solid black areas though, they make the rest of the details pop out and look that much better. They do. They really do. I hope you all have been sleeping well. That's one thing I wish for you. Sleep is a, you know, it's a precious thing. As much as it bothers me sometimes that I have to go to sleep, whenever I go to bed, this is what I do. I set my timer on my phone. I don't use an alarm, I use a timer. I set it for seven and a half hours. I've kind of found that that's an amount of time that makes me feel somewhat well rested. Uh, any less than that, sometimes I feel sleepy all day, which isn't a good feeling. But, uh, and any more than that, I, I kind of want to find the amount of time that I feel rested at. The minimum amount of time that I can feel rested at, right? Because I don't want to sleep more than I have to because I feel like I'm like wasting time asleep because I can't get stuff done while I'm sleeping. But if I don't sleep, then I'm unproductive because I'm just sitting around yawning and feeling miserable. So even, but even then, every time I lie down in bed and I set my timer for seven and a half hours, oh, that's kind of a weird, lousy feeling because I just see that seven and a half hours on my phone and I'm like, oh no, that's seven and a half hours I'm never going to get back. Seven and a half lousy hours, I'm just going to be lying here motionless in bed, doing nothing. But I've got to, you know, I've got to take it for what it is. It's good stuff because that seven and a half hours recharges me. So the, the next, I don't know, how long do you think I stay awake? What is it like? What's 24 minus seven and a half? Whatever that math is. Um... There are, I think I usually stay awake for longer. My sleep schedule does not... The, the amount of time I stay awake plus the amount of time plus seven and a half does not equal 24. It probably equals more than 24, which means that my sleep schedule slowly rotates around the clock, right? It's kind of inconvenient sometimes. Sometimes it's less. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't even know what I was saying anymore, but... Sleep's good, even if it is frustrating sometimes. Also, the other night, I, I think I slept poorly. And, and by poorly, I mean I, I like had bad dreams or something, but I didn't even realize it until I went back to bed, back to bed, back to bed, back to bed the next night. I woke up feeling fine, right? And then my whole day I was fine. And then I went back to bed. Uh, the next night, and I thought, oh no, I had sudden flashbacks. The fami that familiar, you know, crawling into bed, I felt my pillows, and I felt my sheets, and I thought, oh no, I was here last night, and awful things happened. I, I suddenly had all these feelings that I had felt the last night. Like, I, I suddenly remembered that I had slept awfully, that I had these weird feelings of sinking into the bed and feeling kind of, I don't think I had sleep paralysis as some people have described it, but I had had weird dreams and I felt like I had been, uh, I don't know, sinking into the mattress. I felt like I had been being, like my, my head had been sinking into the pillow and I had been suffocating on the, the cotton filling of the pillow and I just been stuck there and I couldn't move. And it was just kind of weirdly miserable, but it, it was also weird because I didn't remember any of this until I went back to bed the next night. I have I have problems with remembering my dream. If that all was a dream. I don't know. I kind of have weird... I, I rarely remember my dreams. So I don't know why that kind of returned to me in that fashion. Do you guys like this drawing so far? I'm kind of digging it. It's coming along. I have a new microphone right now that I'm using. I uh, hope it sounds okay. I'm always trying to kind of figure out what kind of mic, uh, you know, I, some, that's, the, that's one thing that I struggle with. People ask me like, hey, Peter, what's your setup? What are you using? What kind of camera are you using? What kind of mic are you using? What's, uh, what are your art supplies? 
you know, why don't you put up a list of your stuff that you're using so people can, and the problem is I'm like changing it all the time. Uh, so <laughs> I have good intentions all the time, but sometimes it changes for the worst just, uh, just because, um, because the new stuff I get I'm unfamiliar with or I'm not sure because I'm not a professional audio visual expert, you know, I'm just some guy. Hopefully this mic sounds okay, though. I feel like maybe it sounded okay until some people started thinking about it too much because I mentioned it, though. It's a little bit difficult to talk the whole time I'm drawing, to be honest. What kind of stuff have you guys been drawing lately? If you're a, a drawer, an artist, you don't have to call yourself an artist if you don't want to, but... If you want to call yourself an artist, you can. There's no special prerequisite or requirement or certification you have to do to call yourself an artist. You don't have to go to art school. You don't have to draw something fantastic. You don't have to have sold your art or make something amazing or anything like that to call yourself an artist. You just have to say, I'm an artist, really. That's about it. That's it. As far as I'm concerned. I think I was... Um, I mean, I kind of changed my definition of artist on the daily. But at the moment, I think I was an artist before I ever really called myself an artist. I was pretty hesitant to, because it's art, you know, art and artist is a, it has a tendency to be kind of a pretentious word. And when you say, yeah, I'm an artist, you know, or this is art, sometimes Things, you know, ideas and thoughts that you can't control pop into people's heads and they start thinking this and they start thinking that. Uh, but that's okay. No matter what you say, thoughts and ideas that you can't control pop into people's heads. So it's like, whatever. It's, it used to be people asked what I, what I did, you know, what do you do? And I would just say, yeah, I draw pictures. I make YouTube videos. And then I'm having, I was, you know, I was just, it was just too difficult to describe all this stuff. So eventually, I was just kind of out of uh, sheer laziness, I just started saying, yeah, I'm an artist. And then, if it seemed like they were really interested, if they really wanted to know more, if they pried deeper, then I would go into more details about what I did, what I drew, you know. Then they'd be like, oh, what kind of artist are you? Then I'd be like, oh, yeah, I do ink drawings, kind of abstract stuff, you know, it doesn't really look like anything, or maybe it looks like everything. I record videos, post on the internet with some little commentaries, stuff like that. That's how the the conversation usually goes. These these conversations I'm talking about are usually, you know, that like at the doctor's office or something, people just making small talk. Mm hmm. You have to take breaks sometimes. It's okay. If I if I draw draw solid, oh, I thought I was gonna smudge it right there. If you um, draw solidly like that, how long was that? For like a few minutes. Um, you know, my hand will start to cramp up. You gotta take a few little. I call them micro breaks. If I call it like an actual break, I imagine myself getting up and going going for a walk. You know, getting a cup of coffee or something. But just a, a second to put down the pen. Let your hand. Let your hand rest for a second. Don't strain yourself, okay? It's not the end of the world. Have some kind of concentric circles here. Concentric, I think, means circles that go around each other without touching each other in the same sense. Kind of like the circle version of parallel lines. That's my understanding of it anyways. I learned that word a long, long time ago when we had an internet provider called Concentric and their, their logo was a couple of concentric circles. And then later after that, I learned about concentric circles in geometry in eighth grade. And in that eighth grade geometry class, a special magical thing happened every day when the, the, the teacher collected homework we quickly learned that you could turn in literally anything for homework. 
there was like a little tray at the front of class, and at the at the beginning of class, you had to turn in your homework assi- assignment from the previous class, right? And um, it didn't take us too long to realize that this teacher wasn't really looking at what was on the paper of what we turned in. He was just look, pulling the paper out of the tray, looking to see whose name it was, and then marking down um, the homework assignment as completed. And we, we gradually started pushing the limits of what we could put in there. And we eventually started putting in all sorts of different stuff, like our English homework, and uh, still got full credit. Of course, we felt like the winners there, but obviously we would have done much better if we had actually done our geometry homework and uh, studied and learned the stuff. But I'm here today, a successful uh, college dropout who knows what concentric circles are. So, I mean, it worked out kind of for me. I still wouldn't recommend that for anyone, but who knows? Life is weird. That guy probably knew what he was doing. Didn't have time to sit around grading everyone's homework, so. Didn't have time to get into weird little arguments with everyone about why they turned in their English homework either, so. It's whatever. Probably pretty smart on his part. I can't remember what his name was. I remember exactly what he looked like, but I hadn't can't remember what his name was. It's kind of weird how that happens with some teachers. I feel like there's another teacher. There's definitely another teacher who I remember what her name was, but I don't remember what she looked like. Also, I have this problem with when I meet people, uh, when I'm introduced to people. I'm, I think this is probably a pretty common problem, but I keep having this thing where I'm introduced, I'm introduced to strangers, and then uh, whether I'm introduced to them or I introduce myself to them, and they tell me their name, and I immediately forget their name. I can't be the only one with this problem. And it's an awful problem. Is it not? And I've learned you gotta, you've got to nip this in, a, in the bud. You've got to ask them their name as soon as possible again. Just about, oh, I'm sorry, what was your name again? Or something. I don't know. There's no real gracious way to do it unless you like so you know like uh, socially engineer your way to get them to say their name again, or get someone else to say their name, or be like, or introduce them to someone else and have them introduce themselves to someone else. Figure out some way. To, I don't know. It's too much work sometimes. I just be like, oh, I'm sorry. What's your name again? I'm. Or or introduce yourself to them again. Kind of like assume they forgot your name. I don't know. It kills me. There. I've just got to. What I need to do is get used to the fact that I'm going to forget their name and plan on forgetting their name, and then maybe I will remember their name. Keep my own weaknesses in mind, right? Yes. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it will. It sucks, because then you're like sitting around chatting with someone for a while at a party or some other random social gathering or who knows what, and you're just like, dang, I've, I've been talking to this person for an hour. I can't ask them what their name is now. I mean, you can. I don't know. Life's weird. Just do it, I guess. Just act like it's no big thing. But, oh, what's your name again? I got, am I overthinking it? I don't think I would be... I mean, I wouldn't be too, too offended if someone forgot... I don't think I would. Anyways. I guess it happens just because I'm too caught up in the, the whole process of meeting a new person that my my brain is like overloaded with new information. I'm going to rotate. Usually I don't rotate the paper very much because I speed up the videos. And so then I imagine when, uh, when I speed up the videos, you know, like 10 X or 20 X speed, if I, then it'll be uh, like hard to watch because the paper's like, but now that the video is at normal speed, um, it's a lot more watchable if I turn the paper because it's, uh, you're looking at it at the same speed I am. So I'm going to rotate if you don't mind.
it's probably it's better to rotate the paper. I've just kind of trained myself not to. That's all. Before I do these things, I should like gather up, I should gather up some, some like talking points or something. So I have something to chat about with you all. It's like a weird one-sided conversation. It's okay. I'm sure you're all great conversationalists. If you could talk to me, I'm sure it would be a riveting conversation. Talk about all sorts of interesting things. I don't know like what, but. We could talk about art, art struggles. I do like talking to other artists because we can just like sit there and like have like this weird kind of, uh, this weird kind of complainy. You know what I mean? Like a complainy art conversation about art. Like, oh, that's the worst. I hate it when that happens with art. Whatever it is. Just like some random thing. Like, you know, I don't know. You know when someone else is interested in the same things you are and you can just like sit there and whine about stuff. It's kind of a good feeling. When they, when they're, they can relate to your struggles. But, you know, if I was hanging out with, like, a dog person, not a person that is, like, half dog, but, like, a person that likes dogs, and they wanted to talk about, like, the struggles of owning a dog or something, I feel like I, I wouldn't be able to relate to that as close because I'm not really a dog person. I'm a human person. Or in, or in that sense of the word, I'm, a, I'm more of a cat person. And I've never had an indoor cat. I've only ever had outdoor cats. Not really a big fan of indoor pets. For whatever reason. For several reasons, actually. I think even if I had outdoor pets, I want them to be the kind of pet that just like roams about. And then some. This is how it was. The only pets I've had really ever in my life were outdoor cats. Actually, one time I did have a hamster in a cage. I did have that. That was when I was a little kid. One time, I think it was like my seventh birthday or something, maybe my eighth birthday, maybe my twelfth birthday. Oh, I don't know. I think it was more like my seventh birthday. A neighbor guy came over. He was like a few years older than me. He's a good friend of mine. And uh, he gave me a hamster, but he gave it to me in a cage, in a, in a box, uh, it was a box that a, that a computer had come in, and uh, I was so disappointed. <laughs> it looked, I thought it was going to be a computer, because <laughs> it, it said like Dell on it or something, you know, I was like, oh, my own, because I don't think I had my own computer at that point, I was, but I mean, the hamster was pretty cool too, it's just like a little bit of a, I was like excited for something completely different. <laughs> And then I ended up being a hamster that I named Herbie after the, um, sorry, I was scratching my ear. After the love bug. Ever seen that movie? Not the one with uh, Lindsay Lohan in it, but the original. I haven't seen the one with Lindsay Lohan in it. Lohan? Lohan? So that's the only pet I've ever had that I kept in a cage. All the other pets I've had were cats I just kept outside. And, you know, and I felt okay about those pets because if they ever wanted to, they could leave. Go literally anywhere else in the world. I mean, I guess they could go to another continent if they could figure out how to catch a boat or stow away or something. And sometimes they did leave. My cats ran away on at least several occasions. And, you know, it's just like, it's a little bit sad, but, you know, they can do that if they want to. That's the whole point of having an outdoor cat and not keeping it tied up or chained up or fenced up or anything. It's just like, it can do what it wants. 
we'll put food out for it. And uh, when things worked out well, you'd go outside and it'd just be out there chilling, waiting for you and go outside and pet it and stuff, play with it. And that's usually how it happened, which was nice. Only, it was only a couple of times when they ran away and sometimes they'd come back. I think they'd just run away to go make kittens or something. Usually everything was okay though. This is coming along okay. Got some weird tentacly things going on here. I draw a lot of tentacly and mushy, morphy, blobby things lately. I think I might uh, draw like a, a curve going around this. For anyone that's wondering, this is a Rotring Isograph pen. It's kind of my go-to pen lately. The point three five. I also have I have a few other sizes I use. The main other size I use is point seven. It's a but it's uh thicker, I guess twice as thick. These numbers don't really mean how thick they are, they're just kind of numbering system. Cause I have like a some other ones, like I have the the point if this is a point three five, I have a point two five, which is thinner, finer, I guess. And then I have a point one, right? Technically, the point one compared to the point two five should be less, uh, m or more than twice as fine, more than twice as thin as the point two five, right? Mathematically speaking, it should be, but it's not. I don't know if that's because of it's it's faulty, or maybe it's because of the paper I'm using, that it like the ink feathers out a little bit and it's not getting the, tr you know, it's not showing like the true the true width of the line or something, but as far as I can tell, it's just a little bit thinner. Mathematically, it's not adding up is all I'm saying. So I think that's just like a numbering system. It's how they rank them comparatively so they can, they have their, they have their sizes and the sizes, they, they, they go in order. It's just, uh, they're not actual measurements, you know. That's all. That's all. As far as I can tell, anyways. Maybe there are some pens that are like that. I mean, even like the Pigma Microns, you know, like the 0 0.5, the 0 0.4, the 0 0.3, you know, on those, if you look closely, it'll actually have another millimeter measurement on it that has nothing to do with the number, the big number that's on there. So I don't know, it's all a little bit weird. Like you obviously can't compare like the number on one pen to the number on another pen of a different brand. Who knows? There's no like universal standard between pens. I'm gonna draw some circles right here. I like drawing circles. The smaller circles are, the more likely it is that you'll get it, you'll, that you'll draw a circle that appears to be closer to perfect. Of course, you probably won't draw an actual perfect circle ever, whatever a perfect circle is, but the larger your circle, the the more room for error, error. I have a Nirvana song stuck in my head right now. I haven't really listened to them much. I don't even know any of the other members of the band except Kurt Cobain. I was at a record store the other day trying to find some little used records and stuff. Ed McKay's. Do they have those in other cities besides Greensboro? Ed McKay. Like used books, used records, some like little, it's kind of like, some of it's kind of like a pawn shop. that They have like some uh, like electronics and stuff you can buy. But I saw a, I saw like a poster of Kurt Cobain there and then it made me want to listen to Kurt Cobain and Nirvana and stuff. Then I went home and did. And lately I've definitely been f finding that I wanted to listen to more guitar music, um, mostly because I've been practicing guitar more, right? Is that normal? And I think it's mostly just because I want, I've been imagining that I'm the one playing guitar. 
I mean, also in just a general sense that I want to appreciate the music and that I enjoy it. But there is some kind of fantastical uh, aspect to it. Definitely. Can loop this up around, swoop it back down, tuck it in there. There's like a oh I have ink on my fingers. I'm trying to figure out where like this there's like a faint scratchy smudge here. I'm trying to figure out where that came from. I might just do this half page for now and then come back and do a second episode where we do the other half of the page. It's going to come down to this corner. This is how, this is how far it's going to go. All right. Do a little cor corner decoration down here. Yep. And then swoop. Swoop. I use a lot of now even even though I don't do a lot of mandalas anymore, I use a lot of patterns and little lines and stuff that I used to use in my mandalas a lot. I took a lot from those. For sure. Like all these little they look kinda like uh, very simplified feathers to me, these little things, you know. I'm gonna color this in for some contrast. It's gonna be a dark spot. A dark spot. A sun spot. Are the sun spots on the sun, of course, are those dark, are those hotter or cooler spots? I feel like they're cooler spots. Much cooler. Well, look, the hotter it is, the brighter it would be, right? That's the whole point of the sun. It's hot, so it's bright. It warms us up. But I don't know. Science is weird sometimes. Sometimes it's not everything it seems to be at first glance. So I guess I'll just uh, assume until proven otherwise. Or so until someone smart tells me otherwise. Color this in. That's good. Then I kind of want to loop this back up around as well. Like, like so. Oh yeah. And this. And this. And this. Blob action. Slow and careful. I feel like a lot of my videos might discourage some people to take a lot of time doing their drawings because it looks like I'm doing these big complicated drawings, you know. They really take me hours and hours. Uh, but then, you know, you watch me do the whole thing in five minutes, you know. I'm working at super speed, but no, you know, you can go slow, carefully. Take your time. Draw each line with care. There's no rush. It's art. Just do whatever. Don't got to be nothing. And I'm guessing if you've got a deadline for your art, then you're either doing it for a, a, an assignment or a commission. In which case, some different. There are some little rules. I'm not saying it's not it's not true art in that case, but those aren't really the situations I'm talking about is all.
That's all. I like this kind of little, uh, when you link all these little bubbles together, they look kind of like scales or feathers or something. I might do it a little bit more right here for the effect. One more row, maybe. Yeah, I like that. Sometimes with the rotating iso isographs, the um, a little bit of ink builds up on the tip, and so the lines get a little bit thicker. Maybe it's just because I don't clean them. I think you're supposed to like maintain them or something, but I just do that a little bit and it kind of cleans itself off and the lines crisp up again. Or they, <laughs> they usually do. That one got a little bit thick right there. There we are. Oh yeah. Sorry, with this microphone, I have to stay very close to the microphone at all times. It's a dynamic microphone instead of a condenser, I think. So I hope, I hope, it, hope I'm uh, hearable, legible, audible the whole time. I'll, I'll try to go back through the file and make sure it's all good to go. Don't really need to be telling you any of this stuff. Because hopefully it'll all be sorted out before you hear it. I can't tell if I burp more when I'm recording audio and commentaries and stuff, or if I just only notice it more at, at those times. Because that's when it's inconvenient. Big th I'm just like a big fan of how things swirl together and making my own various types of swirls. Big fan. I'm a fanatic of swirls. How about a few more of these? Some more swirls to link it all together. Darken it all up a bit. Oh yeah. There we go. Darken this up a little bit. I'm trying to figure out what if I should put anything in here. That could be the right thing. And you know, sometimes it might not be the right thing, but it's never really the wrong thing. It's like taking a multiple choice test where there's an infinite number of choices and none of them are wrong. It's great. It can be a little bit overwhelming. Like, I don't know why this is so cool to me, the, the infinite number of choices, and I like them. I don't know, maybe this is just where I like it because a lot of places, I don't like having too many choices. Like at restaurants, you know, like a menu with too many choices, I don't like. I don't like the overwhelming number of choices at restaurants. I like a menu with like, I don't know, like five good choices. I don't know. I'm fine with the wait, the waiter, or the waitress just coming up and saying, "Tell me, tell me what's good." I'll take their word for it. I'll just be like, "Hey, hey, what's good here? Tell me like two or three things that are good here, and I'll just t I'll get one of those. Whatever, whatever one of those sounds best to me. I don't want to choose from all three hundred things on the menu. But they, and, you know, but don't they say that a good a good restaurant only has a couple things on the menu? There's no way they can do all those things good. I guess it's a little bit different, you know, with some restaurants, you know, like a Mexican restaurant or something, because, I don't know, Mexican restaurants have tons of things on the menu, but they're all kind of a, variations on the same thing. Variations on rice and beans and chicken or whatever. 
just made made different ways, and they're all pretty pretty delicious. Half the time, I I just usually get nachos, or a quesadilla, I guess, or some other. I I almost always pick something that has a picture of it, even though it never turns out how the picture is. I almost always it gets I almost always get something that has a picture. I do, and you know what really overwhelms me? Those build your own burger places. I don't want to build my own burger, okay? Hey, this is you're a burger place. You construct a good burger for me. It's your job. You do the work. You figure out what burgers taste good. You you do the food science, the food art. You try out all the different combinations. And you figure out what's delicious and fi- and you present me with the best 5. And I'll choose one of those. What if I accidentally, um, you give me like 20, 30 different ingredients and I have to choose? What if I accidentally choose badly and combine, you know, some bad ingredients and I end up with a crappy burger? That's on me. I I don't come to a, I don't go out to eat to, to accidentally create a bad burger. I can do that at home. I have a bur- build your own burger. And plus it's, it's bad because then you have to stand there at the register, the checkout counter or whatever, going, hmm, and ah, uh, and uh, I guess lettuce, onions, no, 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 fried onions, mushrooms. Uh, do you guys have Mushroom? Oh, I already said mushrooms. Uh, ketchup. Oh, that comes on it already. Uh, can you put potato chips on it? It's just weird, man. I don't like it. It's coming along. It looks good. What does this look like? What does this look like to you so far? It looks like something that's kind of standing right here, and then these are like little antennas. Oh, this looks like an eye. Whenever I'm streaming on Twitch and I'm drawing stuff, as I'm working on it, people are always like, oh, it looks like this, it looks like that, and I'm just like, I don't see it. But I feel like they would have told me this looks like an eye or that looks like an eye. I like drawing eyes, uh, but sometimes I don't see the stuff other people see, unless I unless they like point it out to me. Take a screenshot, you know, and... Uh, Put a little red arrow or red circle around it, sort of deal. It's cool though, I like it. A lot of options in art, a lot of options. I feel like I need to draw another line here. I don't know if I like it being so clean cut around the edge. Like so. I'm gonna come back here and swoop back up. There we go. Maybe again. Yes. I'm gonna do some sharp, sharp feathery things here. Some spikes. Sometimes I draw a line like that. I'm like, ugh, I shouldn't have done that. But it's part of the process. You just make it work. Work it in there. Tie it back in. Everything's going to be okay. It's all going to be fine. It's just a drawing. Probably put some more like darker colored in spots, but then you know to 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 darken something in now that I've already drawn, I have to color in over the details. That's the problem I keep running into. I can do this maybe down here in the bottom. 
maybe down here, maybe, maybe down here a little bit, maybe right here. here. Uh, I can always come back to it. We'll see how it goes. Some little curvy, curvy lines right here. I use, I mean, I reuse a lot of the same kind of lines and stuff every now and then I kind of stumble upon something new just by, you know, combining things in different ways. But to be honest, I use this, a lot of the same stuff over and over again, just squish, squishing it together in different ways. Sometimes it frustrates me. It's okay. It's all right. I think I need to make this spot in here pretty dark and deep. Let's put some lines just like this in here. Yeah. I mean, it's okay. I'm getting kind of hot. I want to take off my sweatshirt. Is that okay with you? I might take a second to do that. All right, just a second. I'm going to take off my headphones. <laughs> Ah, my whole shirt came up. Don't look. <sighs> All right. I might turn this like this for a second. Should I turn it upside down? What does this look like? For some reason like this, it looks, excuse me, it looks a little bit more like a wing. Some winged beast. Or something. This looks more like an eagle eye with chicken, chicken flops on top. I want to draw like spiky triangle things coming out here. That's what I want to do. So I'm going to do it. Don't overthink it. I mean, you can't overthink it if you want. It works better for some people. Sometimes it works good for me. Taking a break, thinking about it in the shower or something. Or overnight. Go out on the porch, daydream about it for a minute. But sometimes you just gotta forge ahead. Just keep going. Yeah. This could be a mistake. I say that very lightly. Don't you worry. I say a lot of things are mistakes when really I don't really think any of them are. Don't you worry. I, I say it's a mistake just because I'll, I'll regret it for like five minutes and then I'll forget about it. As I move on to the next thing and it gets lost back in the dense, dense forest of the doodle, you know, the dense jungle need jungliness of it. it all just becomes the, becomes the doodle. It is, it is the doodle. Most people won't see you making your drawings line by line like this so that, you know, if you make a little mistake somewhere, 
and then work it into it, they won't, they won't ever know you made that mistake. You're the only one that'll ever know. Unless you tell them. And even if you tell them, they probably won't even, they probably still won't really realize what, what kind of mental torment you went through. So you tried to rescue yourself and successfully did so. Color this in. I call it coloring in when it's just black, but what else could, should I call it? Blacking it in? Blocking it in? I just call it coloring it in. I mean, I would still call it coloring. I would call it coloring it in if I used it just like a colored pencil or a different colored marker or ink. And if I switched to black for one of those, I would still call it coloring it in. So that's just what I call it. So there. What are you going to do about it? Nothing. Some nice arches here. Then maybe I can connect some other arches through these arches. That might look cool. Might not, but it might. Like so. And so. And so. Uh, you know, some places it, it's a little less even. Which is a little bit discouraging sometimes. Like the gaps don't perfectly line up because I didn't draw everything, well, perfect. I'll come back to this later. I'll... I kind of want to color this in a little bit more, those little gaps under behind the arches and stuff, but I want to figure out what else I'm going to draw here first. Like this stuff over here. Some kind of swirly swirl, curly, curly curl. Bring it down and around. A little bit of shading right here. Give it a little bit more body. Yep. Um, I might, you know, when in doubt, outline. I said that once in a video a long time ago, and it's still true. I'm going to go ahead and kind of start coloring this in right here, up to about right there. A little blackness behind there. Just to kind of uh, accent the arches, the golden arches. Maybe a little line like that. Maybe some more lines like that. Maybe we'll continue this like, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That looks all right, I think. Sometimes you draw things and it looks awful and you're just like, well, I, uh, well, I hope no one looks too closely. That part of the drawing is all. Just maybe I'll just maybe try to make the rest of the drawing look even cooler so that they don't look too closely that part. What else are you gonna do? Huh, what else?
kind of a little splash, splash, sploosh shape here. A little bit of shading in there. Like a bulb coming out of it, a bulb coming out of that, a bulb coming out of that, a bud coming out of that, like a tulip thing or something. Fill this in a little more. Uh, you know, and sometimes if you like, if you're just drawing in one area and you don't really like what's going on there, it's cool. You can just like leave it, come back to it later, go up to another area. Come back to it later or never come back to it. Who cares? You're not going to hurt its feelings. Not going to hurt my feelings. Probably not going to hurt anyone's feelings unless you're doing like a portrait of your best friend or something and said, hey, I'm going to draw a great portrait of you. And then kind of got discouraged while you were drawing their nose or their eyes or something. You just kind of left them unfinished with one eye and half a nostril. That's really the only time someone will get discouraged if you leave part of a drawing and don't come back to it. But you can just tell them, hey, this is my artistic decision, and that's how I s see you as a person or something like that. Say, I'm an artist, and I reserve the right to not explain my art. There you go. Don't ask me questions. I'm here to draw. Huh? I didn't sign up for public speech class along with my drawing. I mean, I guess you do with a lot of art schools and stuff. You got to go to critiques and talk about your art and stuff. I guess that is a big part of it a lot of the time, but doesn't have to be. You don't got to go to art school. Doesn't got to be. There ain't no rules about it. I'm not saying that part's bad, but I'm just saying. It can be a lot of things. Art. This art thing. It can be almost anything. Anything at all. I'm fine. A lot of people try to protect art, like it's their personal thing. They get offended if some people call one thing art or don't call this other thing art. It's just like, just let go. Art's going to be okay. Art will be okay. If people call this art and you don't like it, you don't think it's art, it's okay. You don't need to protect art. It'll be fine. Oh, it's like a weird clamshell or something. I think on the bottom side, I'll do like pinstripes. Perhaps. Yeah. Like so. Nice. I like that. Maybe some dots down here for a little bit of shading. A little bit more shading right there. I kind of like that little top corner there. Looks cool, man. I'm trying to figure out if I should do another line here, if I should just leave that kind of crisp. Maybe I should do some dots. I kind of like some dots right there. Excuse me. I've been eating a lot of mayonnaise lately. Ooh. High level of mayonnaise consumption. 
because I've been eating a lot of pastrami and a lot of bread. Pastrami sandwiches, it's like my go-to sandwich now. I used to never really, I never bought my own pastrami. The only time I had ever ate pastrami was just like, if I had like a sandwich at a deli or something, right? Never thought of buying my own. I love it. It's great. Really been enjoying it. I just ate mayonnaise and pastrami sandwiches. Load it up. It's good, man. I like it. I think this looks kind of cool like this. Also looks kind of cool like this, like some crazy campfire scene. This kind of looks like a campfire. This kind of looks like the woods next to it or something. Does it not? All right, maybe not to you, but to me. To me. It does. It really does. Oh, that was a bad circle. Lousy. That's right, it's going to be okay. We can fix this. A little bit sloppy. Sometimes that happens. Your lines get away from you. Not the end of the world. There we go. I kind of like that little thing squirting up there. Hmm. I think I might be kind of done with this for now. I don't really, there's people asking, how do you know when you're done with the drawing? It's like, I don't know, you just kind of stop at some point. Either when you think, if you add something else, it might make the drawing worse instead of better, or when you feel like it, when you're bored, when you want to do something else. It's not like, a, there's no science to it. It can always be done, and then you can make it undone later, and make it, you know, then, you know, finish it later. Usually I consider things completely done when I you know, post them on Instagram or whatever because then I don't want to change it from its state on Instagram. That's my kind of personal thing. I usually don't change a drawing after I do that. I didn't really expect... I, I like it like this. This this kind of... This port, this uh, landscape mode. What you guys think? Pretty sweet. I'm happy with it. Had a good time. Thanks for hanging out with me today as I drew this. Y'all are great. Y'all truly are terrific to talk to. Really fantastic. Y'all are great friends. Uh, thanks for, yeah, so thanks for hanging out. And I uh, hope y'all have a great rest of your week. And, uh, yeah, so goodbye. All right. What do you guys think about this microphone, by the way? Don't tell me. If it's bad, don't tell me. But do tell me. If you prefer it over, if you can even tell a difference from the other microphone, I'm... I'm like kissing the microphone right now. I don't know. All right. All right. Goodbye. Love y'all.